Hey there, John Morris here with JohnMorrisOnline.com, and welcome to another episode of the John Morris Show. And in this episode, I'm going to be covering how to prevent cross-site scripting attacks by properly escaping your output. So we're going to dive into what a cross-site scripting attack is. I'm going to show you an example, and then I'm going to show you what you need to do inside of your code to handle these sorts of problems. So be sure to stay tuned for the episode. This episode is sponsored by the Complete Web Developers course taught by Rob Percival on Udemy.com. Now what I love about this course is first how comprehensive it is. It's 235 lectures on HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, Bootstrap, WordPress, PHP, MySQL, APIs, and mobile apps. I mean, it's ridiculous. Second, I love how good of a teacher Rob is. As a former school teacher, Rob knows how to explain complex concepts in ways anyone can understand. And of course, the cool thing is I talked Rob into giving my audience an 85% discount on the course. So check the description of this video for a special link that contains a coupon code good for 85% off of the Complete Web Developers course by Rob Percival. Click that link and you'll be all set for the discount. Now, on to the episode. All right, so let's start by talking about what a cross-site scripting attack is. So as you can see here in the definition that I've highlighted here, this is a type of computer vulnerability that uh, allows an attacker to inject client-side script into web pages that are viewed by other users. And so oftentimes this is uh, the use of JavaScript that gets inserted somehow into the output of a web page that wasn't meant to be there and then allows the attacker to do various things. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at an example of this. So if we come over to our page here, uh, you can see I have just some text here and if I refresh this you'll see that I get a pop-up here that says yikes and so this is an alert this is a JavaScript alert that I've put here and if we come over to our code then you can see that what I've done here is in PHP I've echoed this is a problem and then I have my script tags inside of here now this can be a problem for, let's say, for example, let's just take a very simple example where something like this might happen. Let's take a blog comment. So maybe you have a blog and you allow people to enter comments into your site and you don't escape the output and someone enters some sort of script like this. That would get saved in your database and it wouldn't necessarily do anything to your database. But when that comment gets output, then this this JavaScript, if it's not properly escaped, will actually run on your site. And whatever that JavaScript is doing, then it will go ahead and be processed. And so it could be, you know, there's lots of different things that someone could do with JavaScript. A, a very simple one is they could just redirect that page or that site to one of their sites that they want. Or, you know, there's, again, a number of things that they could do, but we, we don't want people to be able to run JavaScript on our site that we don't know about. And so uh, you want to essentially close down the ability for them to do this. And that's what escaping does. Now we're going to be talking primarily about a PHP function called HTML special chars, which is st essentially stands for special characters. Um, and this is the way that you're going to primarily escape data or escape output. So let's go ahead and take a look uh, at how to do this. So you can see I've written a function up here called underscore E where you pass in a string and it essentially runs this through HTML special chars with some settings that we'll talk about and then echoes it out. So if we come down here and we change this from an echo statement to actually call our function here, then this is going to go ahead and actually escape this for us. And we'll talk about what escaping actually is here in a second. All right, so you can see I've done the underscore E. I've applied this. I've gone ahead and saved my changes. So if we come back over to the exact same page and we refresh this, you can see that now 
instead of the JavaScript rendering and running, it simply pr prints out. Okay. And you notice the alert didn't come up or anything like that. So this is escaping. It essentially takes this JavaScript and renders it null. Okay. It can't, it can't render, it can't process. Now, if we go ahead and view our page source here, you'll see what it does. It turns the, the, uh, greater than and less than signs into HTML entities. And that's essentially what invalidates them. So that's what escaping is. And that's kind of how it works. Now, there's a couple things to kind of look at when we're doing this. First off, you need to look at your character set. And the important thing here is that the character set that you have set for the page, so here you see we've set this meta tag and set it to UTF-8, needs to match what you're using up here. And that's really essentially so that the HTML entities, uh, when it, when the, the, the characters are converted, the, the characters that, uh, HTML special chars pays attention to are converted. They're converted properly. Okay. So you don't have a bunch of funky looking stuff happening on your page. So you want to make sure that the character sets match up. Now, the default recommendation for pretty much across the board and even the HTML specifications and I believe XML and so forth is UTF-8. Now, I'm not going to go and dive into a <laughs> primer on UTF-8 and, and why that is, but in the majority of cases, your character set sh is and should be UTF-8. Okay, so uh, in this particular function, it's like PHP 5.4 and 5.5, I believe, default to UTF-8. Older versions defaulted to something else. Newer versions default to uh, a, a setting that is essentially set on the server for what the character coding is. So, you know, again, depending on what's set in your actual head tag, if anything, or what your server setup is, you may have, uh, you may have to specify this UTF-8 explicitly, or you may not. Oftentimes it's probably just to best to, to set it explicitly. All right. So that's the first thing. The next thing then is this flag called end quotes. And so if we go ahead and let's go over to, the PHP specification, and they'll talk about what what these different flags are. So, you'll notice here that the characters or the translations that HTML special characters pays attention to are the ampersand, double quotes, single quotes, less than, and greater than. These are the uh, tags or the characters that HTML special characters will convert to their AT HTML entities. And the reason is, is these are the ones that are usually the most problematic, right? Now, the end quote parts is this flag right here. And it determines how double quotes and single quotes are handled. And it can depend on your application how you want to do that. So, and quotes will convert both double and single quotes. Now, this is the standard kind of recommendation for the majority of cases that you'll want to convert both double and single quotes because it does leave open an attack vector if you don't. Now, maybe in certain situations that you're aware of, you don't, you, you know, you know that and you're building something that'll deal with that and you need to leave, uh, quotes unescaped. So, for example, and to no quotes will leave both double and single quotes unconverted. Ent combat will convert double quotes and leave single quotes alone. So you can kind of look through these and see the different uh, kind of flags that you can add here for that second argument. But again, the standard kind of recommendation, what you'll probably use most of the time, is ent quotes here. All right. Then the last piece is is a question that probably that comes up quite a bit when you talk about this is what's the difference between HTML special characters and then HTML entities, which is another commonly used type of uh, escaping function in PHP. So if we go to our code, and you'll see that I've got HTML entities down here. If we go ahead and comment this out, and we'll save that, and go back over to our page here, and refresh. 
you'll notice that there's nothing different here. Both HTML special characters and HTML entities escape this particular piece of code. So what's the difference between the two? Well, if we come down to the, the documentation here, uh, it actually says right here, the function is identical to HTML special chars and always except with HTML entities, all characters which have HTML character entity equivalents are translated into these entities. So whereas HTML special characters pays attention to just these particular uh, characters, HTML entities will actually, any HTML, any HTML that has an entity, it will go ahead and convert it. Now, why, why and when would you use one or the other? Well, it, think of HTML entities as kind of like a sledgehammer. It's going to convert everything. Now, depending on what you're doing, uh, what kind of text is being entered, that may cause some problems with you display for you display wise with the text that you have. Now, there's all sorts of different uh, you know scenarios where that could happen, but that is kind of the downside of HTML entities is it, it could cause some some display issues uh, if you know you're converting absolutely every entity into uh, something into the HTML entity. Whereas with HTML special chars, it's only paying attention to these very specific ones. And these are the ones that are going to allow some sort of uh, cross-site script to, to be uh, entered into your application. And so by escaping these, it's taking care of the problem without, you know, trying to pound on, pound on the problem with a sledgehammer. So that's really the difference between the two. Technically, both will do the same thing. Uh, they'll both escape these potential problems and you can technically use both. However, the recommendations that I've found most often is to use HTML special chars simply because it's more like a scalpel and it solves the problem in a very uh, specific and efficient way, whereas HTML entities is more like a sledgehammer uh, pounding on the problem. Now, if you want to get access to this source code, then the way to do that is to head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash resources or if you're on my website you can simply click the resources tab right up here and that will take you to my web developer resources page now i have a whole all kinds of web developer resources on here from classes to the different tools that i use but if you scroll down to the bottom here then you'll see a section called code snippets and you'll see php code snippets wordpress code snippets and genesis code snippets so you can go ahead and click on through to the code snippets that apply for the video you're watching and you'll be able to get access to th that code snippet. Now, if we click here, for example, on PHP code snippets, then we will be taken to that page and you'll see all of the different code snippets here and you can click through and you'll get the video, you'll get the description and you'll get the code snippet as well. So again, head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash resources head on down to the code snippet section to get access to the snippet that you're after. Of course, while you're here, you might as well look around and see some of the other developer tools and courses that I have available here that are going to help you down your path of becoming a web developer. And since I'm constantly adding to this page, then you might as well bookmark this page and check back often so you can see all of the things that I've added and get access to all of the tools and snippets and courses and things that I'm using throughout my career. All right, that'll do it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.